All right, well, we just had a fun competition in here. Luciana took it home again, so she was our winner back to back. We had a lot of good competition. It looked like Griffin was going to win it really quick. He went all the way around the world, almost, and two seats shy. Just got stuck. But anyway, uh, really good competition. A lot of people moved. How many moved at least five seats? You meet, meet at least five people. It's almost half of us. Several people moved at least five seats. That was good. We're going to go ahead and start with a speed drill today. So uh, speed drill number eight. So if you're watching, get your speed drill booklets out. Speed drill number eight. So turn to page four. Overall, really pleased with how... Oh, sorry. Yours ended up in the wrong stack. There we go. All right. Speed drill eight. Yesterday, speed drill. We did well. I was pleased with how we did. So let's see if we can build on that. It's a little quicker speed drill today. You'll have two and a half minutes, but you're not adding or subtracting fractions. It's just multiplication. So you get to cancel stuff and get your answers very quickly. Two and a half minutes, and you may begin. Stop. Stop. All right. Many of you finished really early. Hopefully that's a good sign. I was definitely distracted by some weird things going on during one. Not the coolest pen in the world. Uh, Sam has it. So, anyway. All right. Go ahead and exchange with the person behind you. First, the back pass yours to the front. And let's see how we did on speed test. Hey, pencils off your desks, remember. Sign your name in pen as the grader. There at the bottom of speed test eight, next to where it says speed test nine. Sign your name as the grader. And these are 10 points each. All right, going across the top row. Number one, they should have had one fourth. One fourth. Number two, nine thirty seconds. Nine thirty seconds. Number three is one forty fifth. One forty fifth. Number four is one half. One half. Number five is one sixth. One sixth. Number six is four fifths. Four fifths. Number seven is ten. Ten. Number eight is six. 
six. Number nine, two thirds, two thirds. And number 10, one half, one half. All right, they're 10 points each. Figure the score to the best of your ability. Put it in the score blank. Also put it on the score page at the front. Yes, ma'am. Can you say four or five again? Four was one half. Five was one sixth. All right, put the score on the score page. Return to the owners. Return to the owners. Now, don't pass them. Once you've returned to the owners, owners keep them for a moment because they need to teach you how to properly pass things in. So, um, I will, I will teach this to you in a moment, but for now, let's take a look at our scores. Any hundreds, you got them all. Several 90s, you only missed one of them. All right, how about 80s, just missed a couple of them. Any questions on the multiplication? All right, now here's how it works. The back person passes theirs to the person in front of them. Everyone else holds on to them. So back person, pass it in front. You now, next person from back, put yours on top. Next person from back, put yours on top. Pass to the person in front of you. Person in front of them, put yours on top. <clears throat> ben, put yours on top. There we go. Now pass to the person in front of you. Now put yours on top. And then pass to the person in front of you so that theirs is now on top. There we go. Does everyone understand how to properly pass from back? So you don't hand yours forward until you've got the stack behind you. It always starts with the person in the back. I only say this because it bothered me the other day at choir practice, watching people hand in their books, and it dawned on me, you know, Maybe they never learned how to pass them in. I haven't ever taught my students how to pass them in. I should teach them how to pass papers. This would be really good. All right, that has nothing to do with math, but it's a good life skill. Page 68 in your textbook. Set a classwork assignment for you to work on for just a few minutes, and then we will get into our new material today. Page 68, doing the review section. And I want you to do numbers 33 through 40. Numbers 33 through 40 in the review section. Page 68, review 33 through 40. Just some miscellaneous problems. Not really a theme to them, just miscellaneous problems of related to stuff we've been working on of late. Well, actually, not even of late, some of it since the beginning of the year. Page 68, 33 to 40. When you finish, put your pencil down and stand beside your desk. Second, then behind your third. Stand still next to your desk, please. Corey, 
Feliciana right behind him. Bryson right behind her. Jalen. Take about 30 seconds longer. Have a seat. Pencils down. Let's take a look at our answers here. We'll start with Michael. He was the first one. We did get eight of you finished in that time. That's good. Eight students out of 11. We would say the ratio, by the way, is eight to 11 students finished to total students. What would be the ratio of students finished to not students who were not quite able to finish class? Eight to three. Eight to three, right? Uh, by the way, we would call the eight in both cases class B. And to see that the 11 and the 3 would be the consequent. consequent in each case. That wasn't in here, so I just thought I'd review that. Number 33. Michael, what is the place of the 5 and what is the value of the 5? The place of the 5 is in the thousands. Thousands place. So the value is? 0 0.005. Right. So that means what? If it's in the thousands place and there's a 5, then the value is? Five thousandths. There we go. Or if you wanted to reduce to one two hundred. Anyone think to reduce it to one two hundred? Oh, that's a shame. All right, number four, 34. All we had to do was keep the decimal lined up when we subtracted. What did you get, Michael? 2.319. Number 35, adding a couple mixed numbers. What did you get? Five and five, six. Oh, we go to number two, who is Elaine. Are you good so far, Elaine, on the first yes. three answers? What did you get for number 35? Six and five, six. Six and five, six. Oh, all right. Number 36, which of those was an integer, Elaine? Eighteen. Eighteen. Number 37, what did you put in the blank? Equal. Equals because they have the same absolute value. Which of those numbers are prime numbers, Elaine? Five and 37. Not one? No, one's not prime or composite, just five and 37. Number 39, uh, Gary made five shots. He missed three shots. What's the ratio of shots made to total shots taken? Five to eight. Five to eight. How could we write that, Elaine? Like five colon eight or five over eight or five to eight. Good. Any of those answers would be good for number 39. And then for number 40, we had four fractions we needed to write as decimals. Letter A, seven tenths is? Point seven. Two thirds is? Point six repeating. Point six repeating. Four fifths? Point eight. Point eight. And then five eighths? Point six two five. Point six two five. Got it. Well, anyone else get them all but not quite as fast as Elaine? Several people. Was that your only mistake, Michael? Yes. No, I didn't. You had something else as well? I one. Oh, so you fell into the. How many others, like Michael said, one was prime? All right, reminder, one and zero are not prime or composite. By the way, what's the e only even prime number class? Two. Two is the only even prime. Good. Oh, let's see. Flip back, if you would, to page 68 now. Oh, excuse me. Page 64. We're on page 68. Flip back to page 64. I want you to do numbers 66 to 72. On pages 64 to 65, do numbers 66 to 72.
few people already finished. If you're still working, that's fine. One more minute to be working on these. Pencils down. Even if you're not finished with all of these, that's okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. Um, number 66. Sarah has a recipe for cookies, and the recipe calls for two and two-thirds cups of flour. She wants to make 24 cookies. Sarah doesn't want to make 24 cookies. She only wants to make 12 cookies. Maybe she's a young lady who lives by herself, doesn't really have cookies for anybody else, and she's like, I definitely don't need to be eating 24 cookies. But a dozen cookies sounds good, so she's going to make a dozen cookies for herself. Um, people don't really only eat like one or two cookies, right? Like, uh, anyway, um, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to the recipe class? It normally would make 24. We need to cut it down to where it only makes 12. What do we have to do to the recipe class? Okay. Cut it in half. Divide it by two. two. Now notice, divide it by two or cut it in half, they mean the same thing, don't they? Either way, if you say two and two-thirds divided by two, or we want half of the recipe, so therefore half of the flour, where we multiply by half, either way it's going to get you the same point, because this becomes this anyway. Of course, we can't work with mixed numbers. We make this the improper fraction, eight-thirds. Now, Griffin, I don't want to say eight times one and three times two. I want to use some canceling. What cancels here, Griffin? The eight and the two. To get? Four and one. And now I'll multiply across to get four thirds, and then we'll make that a mixed number. One and one, uh, one and one third cups of flour. Did it say how many cups of flour? It just says how much flour. So we do need to make sure we include the unit here. How many of one and a third cups? One and a third cups of flour. Number 67, Jenny purchased a 24 count box of crayons, but one eighth of the crayons, let me say that again, one eighth of the crayons broke during the first week. Hmm, how many crayons aren't broken? It's a two-stepper. First of all, one-eighth of tells me I should do what, class? Multiply. Multiply. One-eighth times the 24 crayons. Let's put the 24 over. One. one. And, of course, we can do a little canceling to get. Three. Well, how many crayons? Three and one. So how many crayons broke? Three. Because remember, it said a third, an eighth of them broke, which means that three broke. But it didn't say how many broke. It said how many are not broken, because we're optimists and we want to look at the bright side of life. Yeah, three crayons broke, but there's still how many that are not broken, Sam? 21 non-broken crayons. How many have that? Number 68, seven eighths. How do we write that as a decimal? This should be memorized. Jalen? 0.875. 5 twelfths. Ooh, this one's not memorized. Class. What do you do if it's a non-memorized fraction that needs to turn to a decimal? Divide. Divide. For five twelfths, what goes in the house? Twelve. Five. The five, the top guy, top brass, the big dog, right? The top guy, he's in the house. The bottom guy, the buck private, has to stand outside. We need to put some point zero zero zeros on here. Do our division. Let's see if we know our 12 timetables. Because 12 goes into 50 how many times? Because that's how much? 48. 48. So how many left over? Two. How many times does 12 go into 20? One. Just once. That's obviously 12. How many left over? Eight. How many times does 12 go into 80? 
six times. Sorry, seven would be eighty-four. Six times is seventy-two. Something's with how many left over? Eight. Eight. So if I wait, that's going to be another six again, isn't it? Over and over again. How many got point four one six repeating? All right. Again, if you don't know it, divide it. Now number seventy. We don't have to divide it. You could, but you don't have to, because this is thousands. How many digits are in thousands class? Four. Three. Three. So we could say point. Now, the 23 needs to fit in the thousands place. So I need to fill in the gap with a. Yeah. Or you could look at this as 23 divided by 1,000. And we said we multiply right, we divide left. We could just move this decimal to the left three places. One, two, three and get 0 0.023 that way for our answer. How many have 0 0.023 for number 70? Either way you want to approach it. Questions on that? A lingering hand there, Michael. Yes, question? I have a quick question. For 67? 67 with the, uh, the crayons, yes. Basically, can you write 78? Yes, I was wondering if anyone would think of that. How many thought like Michael, if one eighth are broken, how many aren't? Well, seven eighths. One eighth broke, seven eighths ain't broke. Right? And multiply 7 eighths times the 24 and get your 21 that way. Either way, at some point you got to subtract either a full minus an eighth is 7 eighths or 24 minus the 3 that broke is 21. And then at some point you have to multiply a fraction. So either way, you're doing the same amount of work. It's just whatever your brain sees first. Excellent. Good question. Good. Any other questions? Well, let's look at 71 and um, read that for us if you would, Corey. In the first basketball game of the season, Kevin made 10 points and Michael made 13 points. What is the ratio of Kevin's points to total points? All right. And this is just for uh, total points. It does mean for just Kevin and Michael. What did you get for your answer, Corey? 10 to 23. 10, which is Kevin's, to 23, which is total. How many had 10 to 23 as your answer? Questions on 71. Number 72, read that for us, Kirsten. Kelly ran two miles in 16 minutes, and, so, and Samantha ran two miles in 18 minutes. What is the ratio of Samantha's to time to Kelly's time? And what do we get for this, Kirsten? 18 to 16. 18 to 16. But we always reduce ratios, so now let's reduce it down to get your final answer. Um, two, wait, no. Well, you do divide the two out, yes. Um, nine to 18. Or nine, eight, nine, not 18. Nine to eight. Nine to eight. Nine to eight. There we go. Divide the two out. How many have nine to eight for the ratio on number 72? Questions on those? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's like half of the units. How many times would we have to run around the field, field to do a mile? Uh, a mile is about seven laps, like just shy of seven. So if you want to do two miles, you'd actually do about 13 laps for two miles. If we're not doing 13 laps. So we just we just do 12 minutes and then we stop and some of us almost die but we remember our inhaler now in the future right undisclosed students to whom i'm referring all right so, since we're on video so we don't say who we're talking about all right she didn't die for the record nobody died okay we got her the inhaler in time and she's not going to forget it next time all right if you would turn over your textbooks to page 67 or 66 rather we are going to begin a new chapter here, and it's going to deal with fractions and decimals, but in a different light. For instance, if I were to talk about half of my students doing something, I could say one half. We also know we could change that to 0.5, but let's be real. Are we going to say 0.5 of my students? No. But 50% is a common way to express half. Percent is just another way to express a fraction or therefore a decimal. So percent simply indicates a part of a group. 50% is a part of a group. It's a half of a group. If you would mark that first line there, a percent is another way to express a decimal, fraction, or ratio. And next to that, write part of a group. Write that down. Doing this with us. A percent is another way to express a decimal, fraction, or ratio. Then write this down, part of a group. A percent is a part. Now, what part specifically? Mark and put a big star next to the next sentence. Read it with me aloud as you mark it, class. Percent means parts per hundred or hundredths. Mega underline that word hundredths. Percent means hundredths. Why is 50% half? Because if 50 out of 100 is something, that's half. 
percent means hundreds. So if I say 12%, class, that means 12 out of 100 have done something. Or, for instance, if you get a 79%, which is a really sad grade because it's so close to a B. But if you get a 79%, that means you got 79 points out of 100, right? Out of 100 possible, 79. Out of 100 possible, 12. Parts per 100 or What's the key word, class? Hundreds. Hundreds. What does percent mean? Hundreds. Hundreds. Make sure you know that fact. Now, let's go back to decimal for a second. What decimal place value means hundreds, Sam? Which decimal digit is the hundreds place? Not the third one. Jalen? The second one. Right? So if I said 0 0.12, this means 12 hundredths. Well, 12 hundredths would be the same as 12%, right? Because class, percent means hundredths. Oh, we got to have that fact memorized. Head up hand. Class, percent means hundredths, right? So 12% simply means class, 12 hundredths. Let's try it again. 12% means what? 12 hundredths. What does 3% mean? 300. What does 59% mean? 500. What does 200% mean? 200. Yeah, which means we could write that this way with the fraction or with two decimal places. And so if you write this off to the side here, percent will equal two decimal places. A percent is going to equal two decimal places. We're going to come back to that in just a second. Now, there's some different things here showing you how to change percents to fractions. For instance, do you see in your textbook there, it says, because percent means parts per hundred or hundreds, if you see 45%, it literally means 45 hundredths or 45 over 100. And then notice they reduced it down. We're looking right here to 9 twentieths. Does everyone see that? So if you wanted to make a percent to a fraction, you just put the percent class over 100 because percent means... Hundreds. What if you wanted to make a percent in decimal? Well, notice what they did with their 32%. Again, class 32% means 32 hundredths. But since it's hundredths, 32 hundredths means two decimal places. 0.32. I would prefer to go straight from this to this. I don't think we need to go to a fraction first. Because mathematicians are, Lame. we don't want to do extra work. So here's the key. We're simply going to move the decimal that exists after the 32, boink, boink, two places, and we have 0.32. So if we had 3% class, where's the decimal? Um, after the 3, right? If I just said 5, where's the, where's the decimal class? After the 5. After the five. So in 3%, where's the decimal? It's after the 3, right? But percent means? Hundreds. Which means how many decimal places? Two. So how many places do I move the decimal? Two. And I create one, two decimal places. So that 3% would become 0 0.03. Earlier I said 200%. Where's the decimal in 200% class? After the second zero. After the last zero, right? But we said percent means hundreds, which means how many decimal places? Two. two. So we go boink, boink. And what is 200%? Two. two of something. For instance, if I had a pizza, how many are hungry? How many wish we had a pizza? Or several pizzas, perhaps. If we had a pizza and he ate, Sam, we're always picking on Sam, Sam ate 50% of the pizza, then he will have eaten half the pizza, right? But what if Michael, now he, he's not a big guy, he's, he's, but what if Michael ate 200% of a pizza? That literally means he ate two entire pizzas. I don't think he could do it. I could. I, I can do it. <laughs> I, I've got some guys and girls in here saying they could eat two whole pizzas. All right, so anyway, 200% just means two of something, right? Um, look at page 67 now. Look at page 67. At the top of the page, you see they also appreciate the laziness of mathematicians. And so they take 32% and they simply go boink, boink, and move in two places. Because they also don't want to have to waste their time changing to a fraction. Look at the example problem on page 67. Now, example 2.18. Notice they're 25%. How many places does the decimal move, class? Two. two. So notice what they got for 25%, Corey? Um, 
0.25, hold on to the, the pen there. 415%, how many places do we move in the decimal class? Two. Two, so what do they get here, Paige? 4.15. 4.15, when they move the decimal two places. Now look at letter C, put a star next to this. Notice on letter C, that does not say 25% class, it says 0.25%. By the way, what is 0.25 as a fraction? One fourth. This could be one fourth percent. You see they mean the same thing? But the decimal's already here. And so when you knock off the percent sign, because percent means hundreds, we have to move the decimal two places. Boink, boink. Notice they both get filled in with zeros. And it becomes 0 0.0025. The decimal always moves two places. Do we see that? Look at the next example, though. What if we wanted to change a, a decimal into a percent? We'll look at letter A. Notice it says 0.57. Class, what's the place value on the 0.57? 100th place, right? 0.57, the last digit is in the second decimal spot. That's the 100th place. Well, what means hundredths? Percent. Percent is correct. Yeah. Got it. Hey, at least she was participating, right? She might have been in the middle of a yawn, but she said it. Thank you. Uh, 57 percent then. Notice if you have the decimal and you want the percent, you move it back the other direction to get your 57 percent. So if you write this down on the side margin of your paper, this has helped students in the past. D2P. D2P. Notice it's alphabetical with a 2 in the middle of it. It means if you have a percent and you want to turn it into a decimal, you move the decimal two places that way. But if you have a decimal and you want a percent, you start at the decimal and move it this two places to get the percent. D2P, that may help you if you struggle with it. Look at letter B, 3.57. They want to make it a percent. If you want a percent, you got to move the decimal class Two places. If you have the percent, you want the decimal, you go that way. If you have the decimal, you want the percent, you go that way. Notice they move the decimal. Boink, boink. And 3.57 became what, Griffin? 357%. 357%. Look at letter C. 0 0.023. They want a percent. How many places does the decimal move, class? Two. Two. And since they have the decimal, they want the percent, they're going to move the decimal that way twice. And what did they get? Uh, Bryson? Uh, or, um, That's the one we just did. Make sure you're paying attention, Bryson. On the next one, letter C, we have 0 0.023. They wanted a percent, so they moved the two decimal two places that way to get 2.3%. 2 there we go. Stay with me. Questions on this. How many remember this from fifth and sixth grade? Moving the decimal to get percent. Turn the page. Turn the page. On numbers 1 through 12, that top section, they want you to turn percents into fractions first. Well, what does percent mean? Hundreds. And as a fraction, that literally means give it a denominator of 100. And then reduce. Do 1 through 11 just the odd. 1 through 11 do just the odd there on page 68. Put it over 100. And then here we would have reduced to get 3 25ths. Put it over 100 and reduce for 1 through 11 the odd. Just the odd ones. Make sure you reduce. So anything that reduces, make sure we reduce. We always reduce fractions and ratios. Is there anything I can divide out of the top and bottom? Then we're done. Move on to the next one.
Number one, to make it a fraction class, I've got to put the 30 over because percent means? And then to reduce, I just knock out the zeros. How many have three tenths? Look at the next one. I've got to put the 33 over 100. Does it reduce? No. Because the only thing you can divide out here is a 3 and 11. You can't divide that out of 100. Look at number 5. What's my initial fraction going to be, Griffin? Um, 4, 9, no. For number 5, um, Griffin, what's my initial fraction going to be? 100 over 100. There we go. I can reduce. I can at least divide out of 2, right? What do we get if we divide 112 by 2, class? 56. 56, careful. And then 100 by 2? 50. 50. I can divide by 2 again. Let's divide by 2 again. What do we get when we cut 56 in half? 28. And of course, 50 cut in half is. And there's our reduce. Or we could say 1 and 3 25ths. But I'm inclined to leave the 28 25ths. Uh, look at the next one. I need to put the 42 over 100. What do we get when we reduce it down? Uh, Corey. Divide by 2, Corey. Ooh, careful. 2 goes into 4. And 2 goes into 2. So 21 over 50. There we go. 21 50. Let's look at number 9. What's the initial fraction I have to make, Luciana? 215 over 100. I can at least divide by a 5, right? Let's take the easy one, class. What's 100 divided by 5? 100 divided by 5. 20. There we go. 20, five $20 bills makes 100 bucks. Now we've got to divide this by 5. How many times does 5 go into 21, class? 4. Four. How many left over? 1. How many times 5 go into 15? 3 times. We could either leave this or we could say 2 and 3. 20th. Either answer would be fine. And number 11, what's my initial fraction going to be, Kirsten? 16 over 100. And then what can we divide out of top and bottom class? Five. 5. And that's going to give us 3 over 20. Questions on making percents into fractions. That seem pretty easy? Now, the reducing is annoying. I'll give you that. But just put it over 100. Seem easy? All right, now, for numbers 13 through 23, the odd, we're turning the percent into a decimal. Move the decimal two places. That's it. This should take you about 30 seconds to do 13 to 23, the odd. Do 13 to 23, the odd. Remember, if you don't see a decimal, where is it? At the end. At the end. Move it two places, you're done. Keep you just about a minute past the bell, so stay with me. Number 13, 55% becomes what, Michael? 0.55. 0 0.55. Number 15, Kirsten, 89% becomes? 0 0.89. 0 0.89, got a tough one for you, Ben. Number 17, 0.23% becomes? 0.0023. Great job, 0 0.0023. Number 19, 20.5% becomes what, Elaine? 0 0.205. 0.205. Number 21, 740% becomes what, Griffin? 0 0.74. Oh, 740% with 740 Where's the decimal, Griffin? Where is it? Behind the, Behind the zero. How many places does it move? Two. Two. Point. Boing. So what should our answer be? No, no, no. 7.4. There we go. 7.40 would be fine as well. And how about for redemption there, uh, Griffin? Number 23. 37.5% becomes? 0.375. 0 0.375. I did not tend to get your assignment pads out. How many got all six of those right? Now, if I have a decimal and I want a percent, we're going to move it two places that way. Now do numbers 25 through 31, the odd. Just four problems. 25 to 31, the odd, then we'll be done. But turn these decimals into percents by moving the decimal two places the other direction. 0.0 point, point the other way and slap a percent sign on. It should take about 30 seconds, if that. Not even that. <laughs> Most of you done already. Number 25, what does 0.26 become, Paige? 
Twenty-six percent. How about number twenty-seven? Point nine nine. Jalen. Um, ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent. How about point four, Corey? Forty percent. Good. How many had forty percent? Be honest. How many had four percent? Two places. Remember that extra point gets filled in with zero. Forty percent. How about number thirty-one, Bryson? Nine uh, percent. That's number thirty. How about number thirty-one, Bryson? Um, Ooh, how many places do I boink? Two times. Only two times. Boink. So boink, boink, I get what? Uh, 39.5. 34. percent. And there we go. All right, questions on that? We'll practice a little bit more with that tomorrow. Your homework tonight has nothing to do with percents. It is to do page 65, numbers 1 through 10 in the homework section. Page 65, numbers 1 through 10 in the homework section. All right, you are dismissed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.